Welcome to our Curriculum Cafe videos. During this video, we will be taking a look at some fluency games that we can incorporate into our classrooms to help support our students with their fluency in basic math facts. We are going to look at three different games that can be used across all grade levels, kinder through eighth grade. The first game is called Bullseye Operations, and we can use this game to practice addition, subtraction, multiplication, and division, which makes it a perfect game to use in our classrooms. The second game, Tic Tac Toe, works to practice addition or multiplication skills and hones in on the idea of sums and products. The last game we will look at is Number Wars, and this game, works when practicing multiplication, addition, and subtraction. It can also be used with positive and negative numbers in the middle school classrooms. Let's start with our first game. For both size operations, you will need dice and something for students to write with. Students can work independently or in partners. The students will roll either one or two dice depending on their skill level, and they will then take the value of the dice and they will either add, subtract, multiply, or divide that value with the bullseye number. Let's look at an addition example. If my bullseye number is four and I roll a five on my die, I would then write my addition sentence five plus four and write the sum nine. If I rolled two dice, then I would first add my two dice to find my dice value. If in this case I rolled a five and a three, I would add those to get my dice value of eight. I would then add them to my bullseye number. So eight plus four is 12. Depending on the grade level you teach, you can also decide on the bullseye number to make sure that students can be successful with this game. Subtraction looks very similar, except that I need to make sure that my bullseye number is larger than the value of my dice, unless you're in middle school and students know how to work with negative numbers. Another difference would be that if you roll two dice, you can have students either add or subtract the value of the dice first, then subtract that summer difference with the bullseye number. For example, if I rolled a three and a five, as a teacher, I can decide if I want my students to add those two numbers to get a sum of eight, that then they would subtract from the bullseye number of 12, or I can have the students subtract the lower value dice from the larger one, in this case, five minus three, to get a two. My students would then subtract the two from the 12. It all depends on the skill you want the students to work with. Here's how this game would look with multiplication. If I choose to have my students roll only one dice, the process is pretty straightforward. My students multiply the value they rolled with the bullseye number. If I decide my students will roll two dice, then I can decide to have the students add the two dice together, subtract the values of the two dice, or even multiply the value of the two dice before multiplying the answer with the bullseye number. Bullseye operations can also be done with division, but I do have to warn that it can be tricky because more often than not, there will be a remainder depending on the grade level that you teach, this might not work. If you decide to use this game with division, make sure that the bullseye number you select has multiple factors and is large enough to divide by. You can see on the screen that the process would be the same as with multiplication. The next game is one of my favorites and it's called Tic-Tac-Toe. With this game, you will need dice, a tic-tac-toe chart, and something to write with. This game is played in pairs just like tic-tac-toe and each player decides if they will be X's or O's. Before playing, each player will take turns writing sums or products that they can get with two dice into each section of the tic-tac-toe chart. Players then take turns rolling the dice, stating the equation, then finding the sum or product. If that sum or product was one of the numbers written in the tic-tac-toe chart, then that player can make a mark. The first player to get three in a row wins. Let's take a look at an example. On the left is an example with addition, and on the right is multiplication. Since my dice range from 1 to 6, then the numbers I can write in the chart can range from 2 to 12 if you're using this game for addition, and 1 through 36 if you are using this game for multiplication. On the screen is what the charts with the written sums or products will look like. If I roll a 3 or a 4, then if I was doing addition, I would add these two values together and say 3 plus 4 is 7. Since 7 is not one of the numbers on the tic-tac-toe chart, I do nothing else and the next player goes next. If I was doing multiplication, I would multiply the two values and say 3 times 4 is 12. And since 12 is on the chart, I would make a mark on either of the two 12s that were written on the chart. Then the next player goes next. The game will continue until one of the players gets three in a row or the game is considered a scratch. The last game we will go over is Number Wars. And this is a game I played with my 8th graders all the time to practice their integer operations, but can be done with all grade levels. All you need is a deck of cards or index cards with numbers written on them. 
students play in pairs, and split the deck of cards evenly between them. The rules are similar to War if you've ever played that game before. Students will each flip two cards and then apply whichever operation we are working on as a class. Before we get into this game, I want to make sure that I address the face cards if you're using a deck of cards. Depending on the grade level you teach, you will either want to remove the face cards and work only with the cards that have a number value on them, or if you teach the older grade levels, you can assign the Ace as a 1, Jack as 11, Queen as a 12, and King as a 13. You can also go ahead and remove the jokers. If you are in middle school, you can also use the black cards as positive numbers and the red cards as negatives. Let me walk you through an example. Both students will keep their face cards down in front of them. The rule for this specific example will be the largest sum wins. At the count of three, both players will flip their two cards. On the left, you can see player one and her two cards, and on the right, you can see player two and his two cards. Both players will add their two cards to determine who has the larger sum. Player 1 has a 3 and a 4, which is 7, and player 2 has a 7 and an 8, which is 15. Since the rule was the largest sum wins, 15 is greater than 7, so player 2 wins this round and gets to keep all those cards. Let's assume we were playing this game with multiplication. In this case, the rule will be product closest to 0 wins. Player 1 would have multiplied the 3 and the 4 to get a 12, and player 2 would multiply the 7 and the 8 to get 56. In this case, 12 is closer to 0, so player 1 would win this round. The game continues until one player runs out of cards. I hope you found these games valuable for your students. If you have any questions, feel free to contact me at rosa.gutierrez at omsd.net. Thanks for watching this episode of the Curriculum Cafe videos. Make sure to subscribe to our Curriculum Cafe YouTube channel to receive updates when our new videos are posted. And make sure to hit that like button to let us know the types of videos that you find most valuable for your teaching.